If you're looking to enhance the front end of your BMW, but you wanna start with an easy modification that you can do yourself while only taking up about an hour of your time, then you're in the right place. Because in today's video, we're installing a mod that checks all of those boxes. Let's get into it. What's up everybody, my name is Fritz and welcome to the channel. So the M235i is finally getting its front lift, which is hands down the easiest modification if you wanna change the front end look of your car. The lift that we have here today comes to us from Souvenir. The thing that I really like about this lift, other than its design, is that its mounting points on the underside of the bumper don't go too far deep underneath, so it doesn't block any of the original hardware. For additional security, we are going to be using 3M tape as well. This kit also includes a set of their underside guards that will protect the front lip in the event that you come across that speed bump or driveway that you can't quite clear, taking the brunt end of the force and damage. In any event, let's get right into it. Although in this particular case, I decided to wash the entire car, you don't necessarily have to. Just clean the area in which that we're gonna be working in, which is right underneath the bumper. But it does give us a good excuse to clean the entire car to match this magnificent piece that we're about to put on. In either case, when it comes to placing on the double-sided tape, we already have the locations outlined on the lip. But first, we'll need to prep it with some alcohol. Once the area is clean, we can lay down one strip of tape across the middle and three at the edges. One running front to back along the end and two going across, with the inner side having some material that needs to be trimmed. Be careful not to cut into the carbon and cut along the edge when possible to minimize this risk. With the top side done, we can move on to the bottom, which we'll also prep with alcohol. As that dries, we need to cut the guards to match the lip's curvature. A solid edge piece will go right in the middle, with two ridged pieces going next to it and going around the sharper curves. However, we need to remove a solid end from each piece. Just make sure to cut the opposite end of the two pieces. Once those two pieces are cut to length, we'll have to thin all three pieces by cutting above the second row of dots. We won't be using the upper ridged section. Just take your time as this is the most time consuming part and may require one to two blade changes and then crease the cut to speed things up. The guards are very thick and tough, which is what we want to see in a guard, but makes this part more difficult. Once the middle section is cut, place it at the center of the lip and you'll have to shape it as you press it in. Now do the same for the two neighboring pieces that will go on both ends of the middle piece and you'll want our center piece to be in contact with our cut ends. The next two pieces we'll cut are both solids, and this process will be similar to our double ridged pieces. The only difference being that we actually need to measure how much to cut off. Once those are on, we should have two more scrap pieces that will need to be trimmed for the ends, leaving this corner as the only piece on the underside uncovered. As the tape and guards adhere to the lip, let's lift the car and get it supported on jack stands. For self-tapping screws, I went and bought a box of these 1-inch screws that also have a padded washer. At 5 16 it's close enough to 8 millimeters that we only need to use that bit to tackle this portion of the job. As you can see, an inch and a half would be too long at the edges, and both are too long for the middle section. So we'll need to use the same eight millimeter screws that hold up the under panel. In order to get more flexibility with our working space, let's remove the under panel and the screws holding in the bottom of the bumper shroud. Clean off the area with some alcohol, and if you don't have someone to help you, you can use your jack. As you all know, I love my new Daytona jack. It's low profile and has a long reach, but it also has another feature under the jack pad, and that is its 10 millimeter Allen that you can remove to place in this cross beam. Although it's typically used for suspension work, it's perfect for this application. Just tighten down the included bolt by hand and adjust the cross beam to support the lip. 
You can position it however you want, as it can rotate, extend, and each end has height adjusters. Lining up the lip with the jack's crossbeam was so easy. Just ensure it goes in front of the seam at the bottom of the bumper, and the edges are flush. I used the jack for 90% of the placement, and pressed in the lip the other 10% of the way with the height adjusters. Then you can peel back the corners of your double-sided tape on both ends. Then place in your self-tappers first, and be mindful of the lip's position to that lower seam and the bumper's edge. Press in the screw firmly and allow the drill to apply gentle pressure until it goes in, but don't drive it all the way in yet. We must do the opposite side first and have room to remove the tape cover. With the lip held in by the four lateral screws, we can remove our jack and drill through the four center holes with a 1 8 bit. Keeping in mind, we don't need to drill far. Then we can loosely place in our 8mm under panel screws. With all the screws in, peel off the tape cover and press the bumper and lip together. If the cover doesn't peel off smoothly, back out the screws in the area and use a downward force as you pull. In terms of securing our fasteners, we'll snug them down with hand tools. I would recommend a stubby ratchet because it doesn't provide extra leverage to accidentally over tighten and crack the lip. I also allowed the car to sit overnight as the tape joins the lip to the bumper by applying light pressure with the crossbeam, but an hour should also do the trick. Afterwards, you can remove the crossbeam, throw on the under panel, and enjoy the carbon fiber front lip from Souvenir on your BMW. And just like that, we've installed the souvenir front lip on your BMW, hopefully with enough security that it never falls off. In terms of clearance, we are losing about an inch worth of clearance on the edges and then two inches right down the middle. So make sure to take your time when you're clearing those first few speed bumps and driveways. But with the underside guard there, you'll have the protection in the event that you can't quite clear them. As for the installation, I wanted to install it as it was intended. So we did use those self tappers and the screws that we typically see on the underside panel. If as time goes on, we start to develop some soft spots, I will add some additional fasteners and I'll make an update video sharing what type of fasteners and where specifically on the lip we had to add them. So keep an eye out for that. But if you have any experiences with front lips, maybe you have a different bumper design, different car, different lip, please share your advice down in the comment section, as well as any other questions that you might have. All the resources for today's video, including the lip, will be in the description links. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.